I'm continuing with Dark Horse Comics with the second Rogue Squadron storyline, The Phantom Affair. Forgive my voice, I got a bit of a bug I'm getting over. Mike Stackpole continues to lead writer for Rogue Squadron, but we've had a bit of a shakeup with the rest of the staff. In particular, the big change is that the main artist of this issue is Edvin um, Bukovic, who was a very promising artist here, does some really great work, and would later go to work on on The Last Command, along with the um, Human Target miniseries at Vertigo, and with um, on Grendel with Matt Wagner. This book came about a year after Edvin won his won an Eisner Award for Promising Newcomer. Uh, unfortunately, Edvin died of cancer in about 2000 or so, just two weeks after his initial diagnosis. Rogue Squadron is escorting a convoy to the planet of Merst, which I'm probably mispronouncing, as part of a diplomatic mission. Merst is a, is a university planet, and several of the scientists there have developed some technology that's been used in several major Imperial projects, from big cash sinks like the Death Star to more mass production stuff like the gravity well generators used on interdictor cruisers, all of which were things which have become, in some manner or another, banes of the existence of the Rebel Alliance and now the New Republic. The latest piece of tech to come out of Merst is a cloaking device that can also allow ships to bypass gravity well generators, the kind of thing which is actually the Rebel Alliance, or rather now the New Republic, needs more than anything else. So Wedge is put in the position of having to make the new rep's case. There's just one problem. The Imperial officer sent to argue the Empire's case why they should have the technology is Loka Hask, a former space pirate who was responsible for the attack on Wedge's parents' refueling station that killed them and left Wedge an orphan, and who Wedge thought he had killed in revenge back as an adolescent. There was a growing political movement on Merst as well, called the AEA, or Anti-Endor Association, made up of Imperial sympathizers who are basically Endor truthers, people who argue the Battle of Endor didn't happen and the Empire Emperor isn't actually dead. Now, considering Dark Empire, they're not entirely wrong. Tycho gets into fight with them over this for multiple reasons. They also slag on the actual cause of the destruction of Alderaan, claiming that that was the Alliance's responsibility when uh, Tycho is an Alderanian, and is saved by the Ghost Jedi, a spectral figure that haunts the city. While Wedge and Loka each present their respective government's cases, a group of members of the AEA steal the plans and frame Tycho and the rogues in the process. This leads the rogues up to flee with Wes Jansen in his hospital bed, he was injured in an early adventure, from the hospital to the underground, which is actually a way above ground in the trees above the city where various countercultural figures and dropouts live. It then turns out that shortly after the AEA stole the plans, the plans were in turn stolen from them by a mysterious group of robots. Robots owned by an enigmatic scientist and musician who has increased himself in an asteroid, uh, Dr. Falcon. Falcon had developed some of the technology that was used in the Death Star and had chosen to become a hermit after the destruction of Alderaan and stole the plans to keep them out of the Empire's hands. However, there is yet another twist. Wedge reveals to the rogues that the plans are in fact fake. They were created to draw cash from the Imperial cost covers initially in terms of repaying for the funding, and now that the Empire wants them delivered, they were retooled to require special materials that Republic intelligence could theoretically track, 
leading them, they hope, to the Empire's top R&D facility, which was set to negotiate for them to make it look good. However, things have escalated quickly. Ultimately, nobody gets what they want. The Empire caught with Bronze Mirst until they're driven off by the rogues. The plans for the cloaking device are destroyed with Loka Hask and Dr. Falcon, and a suicide attempt by Dr. Falcon to take out Hask and an Imperial um, Injector Cruiser, which generally succeeds, um, but this also happens at the cost of Escaro Loro's Wookiee companion, Kroznik, as life, as he decided to stay behind at the lab facility in order to make sure that Hask did not escape. We learned that the imp official Imperial story of what happened to, on, to Alderaan that was destroyed by the rebels in a research accident, which that sounds like a g the giant bile, pile of nonsense that just doesn't hold water to even the slightest scrutiny, which to be fair, makes total sense. There are lots of cover stories which are the giant piles of nonsense that don't hold water under any scrutiny and which often have the counter effect to what you actually intended, like, for example, in this case, causing people to flock to the Rebel Alliance with the with the call of Remember Alderaan. Speaking of giant piles of nonsense, we're introduced to the Endor Truther movement. Presumably, there are similar movements being carried out without, throughout the galaxy, not just on this planet, presumably also sponsored by Imperial Intelligence to make local populations more reluctant to join the Rebel Alliance. The gravity field generators used in interdictor cruisers can be further weaponized into a gravitic polarization beam. However, the knowledge on how to do that was lost with Dr. Falcon, the inventor of the original technology, when he used that technology to destroy his own lab, himself, his research notes, Loka Hask, and a nearby interdictor cruiser. We see in flashback how Wedge Antilles' parents died, and how, with the help of Booster Tarek, he took revenge on the pirates responsible for their death. We also see in flashback Eskal Loro finding her husband after his death. Groznik is killed, keeping Loka Hask from escaping from Dr. Falcon's android lab. The art of this comic is fantastic. There is some fantastic, incredible framing with the art in some of these pages. Particularly everything related to the flashback, to um, to Wedge's search to revenge, all that whole chunk in issue two. There's even some really good comic timing with some of the panels involving the rogues leaving for the upper underground later on in the series that is absolutely stellar. These pages are done by Bukovic. I'm probably mispronouncing that. And I'd say this is probably some of the best art in the Star Wars comics since Walter Simonson's run at Marvel. This is also made somewhat tragic due to Bukovic's death from cancer shortly after his diagnosis in 2000, as mentioned in the um, backstory section. I do like the variety of college life jokes that come up with the student population, both of the light and dark humor variety. In particular, the students who work at the detention center as a student job and are too busy studying to pay attention to Reg seems rings very true to me. I, I really like this story, and I think it makes for a good science fiction comic book story. I definitely recommend picking this one up. Now, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break from Star Wars for a little bit. Um, some of the discourse around Star Wars after, in the wake of um, the last of um, Rise of Skywalker has, going for the last Jedi 2 Rise of Skywalker, but kind of kicked up again with Rise of Skywalker, has gotten a little unpleasant. I just want to keep that out of my channel for a bit. So I want to do a, something a little different this time. Uh, uh, next time, or rather, for the next few months. Uh, another short-term project, and also I kind of want to spread things out a bit and not focus too much on Star Wars. It'll be a, this, will, this next project's going to be more comic-focused and a bit more in-depth recap-related. Um, but when I do return to Legends of the Force with Part 41... We're going to take another look back at a um, comic adaptation of a of one of the Star Wars novels. The first Star Wars novel, the thing I kicked off this channel with. Specifically, the Dark Horse Comics adaptation of Splinter of the Mind's Eye.
you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.